Okay, so in this video, we want to find the volume of the solid whose base is the region bounded by the curves y equals x squared and y equals 4x minus x squared and whose cross sections perpendicular to the xy plane are squares perpendicular to the x-axis. Now, a cross section is a fancy way of saying a thin slice of the solid or more precisely an infinitesimal slice of the solid. So what we have here is a solid with a flat base. And imagine that this solid is made up of cheese. And you take a knife and you cut in a way that's perpendicular to the xy plane and also perpendicular to the x-axis. You cut a very thin slice of the solid. The result will be a very thin square. And what we're interested in is here finding the volume of this solid. Well, let us first sketch the base of the solid in the xy plane, but first we need the points of intersection between the two curves. So we simply equate their y values. So to solve for x, we simply send these terms on the left-hand side. We can factor 2x. And other solutions are trivial. x equals 0 or x equals 2. So we need the corresponding y value. So when x is 0, we can take the simpler curve. y is also 0. And when x is 2, 2 squared is 4. So we have our two points of intersection. And notice that the two curves are very simple. The first curve is a parabola facing upward as the multiple of x squared is positive 1. The second curve is also a parabola but facing now downwards as the multiple of x squared is negative 1. So here's y equals x squared. We have our first obvious point of intersection being the origin. And if you factor the other parabola, you can factor an x from it. And so this also passes through the origin. And will also intercept the initial parabola at the point 2, 4. And so we can clearly see the region bounded by these two curves in the xy plane. So this is the base of our solid. And what we're saying is if we take a thin slice of this solid, so a cross section, in a way that's perpendicular to the xy plane and perpendicular to the x-axis. So here's the x-axis, the y-axis. And now imagine that we take up a knife, so my pencil, my pen is the knife, and we cut through right in a way that's perpendicular to the base of our solid, so the xy plane, and also perpendicular to the x-axis. We cut a little slice of the solid. So the base will be an infinitesimal little rectangle. Just a really thin slice of the solid. It is, of course, as it is a vertical rectangle now in the plane, position along an arbitrary x value. And the thickness of our slice is, of course, the width of the rectangle, simply given by dx, as it is, of course, an infinitesimal change along the x-axis. So we cut through the solid this way, and the result is supposed to be a thin square.
And the base of our little square is this little infinitesimal rectangle. So this is now the little slice of our solid that was obtained by cutting through the solid perpendicular to the x-axis. Now here's a second way of thinking about constructing this solid. Imagine the region in the xy plane is the flat surface of a roof. And on this flat surface, you will erect in a way that's perpendicular to the x-axis infinitesimal squares. So these really thin squares. So if you erect across the entire region these infinitesimal squares that are perpendicular to its base and also perpendicular to the x-axis, you construct essentially a little roof, a little solid. And now we want to find the volume of this little solid. Well, all we need, of course, is the volume of one of its thin slices. And then if we can find the volume of this thin slice by summing up the volume of all of the thin slices covering up the base, we will obtain the total volume of our solid. Well, we need the thickness of our little slice. This is, of course, the width of the rectangle, dx. And because we have a square, we need the length of one of its sides. But, of course, the length of a side is the length of the rectangle. Well, the length of the rectangle is a segment along the y-axis, so we need the y value up and the y value down. Well, up here, y, and of course because we have dx, everything we measure must be in terms of x. So we, up here, y is 4x minus x squared. And then minus the y value here, which is x squared, so minus x squared. Let me simplify this up here. So the height of our arbitrary infinitesimal vertical rectangle is 4x minus 2x squared. And we can factor from this, of course, 2x. And if we do, we are left with 2 minus x. This is the height, the length of our rectangle. Therefore, this is the length of a side of our thin cross section. And now we're good to go. The volume of this little cross-section, of course, is the area of the square. So this times this. So if you do this times this, you get, of course, 4x squared times 2 minus x squared. So this is the area of the face times the thickness, dx, returns the volume of this arbitrary infinitesimal cross-section of the solid. To obtain the total volume of our solid, we have to sum the volume of all these little square cross-sections from, well, where to where. The cross-sections begin here, where x is equal to 0, and they go all the way up to here, where x is equal to 2. And this will return the total volume of our solid, and this is not a very easy integral to evaluate. Square 2 minus x, multiply by x squared, factor 4 out, use the power rule, apply the fundamental theorem of calculus, and you will find quite simply that the volume is 64 over 15. And that's it.